Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Katja and this is the first of the two videos I will release for the Costube 2022 event. Want to know more? Check out the link in the description. In this video we are talking about using recycled materials in costuming while making a Regency gown out of some old curtains. So settle down and let's go. Since I made my previous Empire dress and it was years back, I've been wanting to make another one. That's because my first Empire dress didn't really work out that well because I couldn't get the fabric I really wanted for it. Here is the dress and it still sort of fits except for the arms that are too small. But the main problem is the fabric. These flowers are too flashy and they make this look too modern. So I have an event coming up where I need some kind of uh, empire dress. So I decided that I make another one. I often frequent local thrift stores, charity shops, flea markets, or whatever you want to call them. I am lucky because there is a great selection of those in the Helsinki region. Almost every time I mention getting a big part of my fabrics from thrift stores, people tell me that they are never able to find anything. Yeah, there's some luck involved, of course, but there are some tips that I can give to help you in finding good fabric. Make a habit of browsing through the thrift store curtains, bed linens and tablecloths frequently. The selection is always changing and you can never know if there are those silk curtains waiting for you. Also, when you go to thrift stores, choose the shops wisely. The shops in a wealthier area may have better quality items and people are more likely to donate expensive stuff rather than spend their time trying to sell it themselves. Learn to recognize fabric types by your fingertips. You are not able to do a burn test at the thrift store, so you have to just guess the fabric content. Have a, some sort of idea on your future projects. If you are planning to make an 18th century gown during the next year, Pay attention to the fabrics that might be suitable already months in advance as you will not be able to just go and pick up the fabric when you need it. You will need to collect a stash and find a way to store your fabrics until you need them. Check out the fabric carefully. If it has moth holes, leave it. In any case, it is a good idea to wash the fabrics as soon as you bring them home. On this oh. nice curtain which has this lovely printed pattern with really pretty edges it's not cotton but this is just for the event and I'm not probably going to use this dress that much so it doesn't really matter so I'm not going to be historically accurate here, but I'm just going to have fun with the pattern. So uh, I can use the previous pattern, but I want to make certain changes. So this is a really basic dress pattern for the era. And I wanted to have gathers at the front, like I've seen in many other dresses. And that's easy to do, I just lengthen the front. I also may have a longer slit at the back or maybe slit this whole way down and then add ties with which to tie this up because then I can show up these nice edges here and because I will have a petticoat underneath it doesn't matter that this splits open and anyway this is really see-through as you can see so I have to have something underneath there are also these parts it would be so much easier if the flowers were pointing this way but unfortunately they are pointing downwards but I wonder that I might be able to use this for the sleeves somehow let's see I don't have that much fabric but there is enough width and that should be okay because this is quite narrow and it doesn't take that much fabric. I might even make this a little bit wider 
if I have fabric for it because then I have more room to dance and have fun in it. So let's start laying out the pieces on the fabric and see what we can do. out of recycled materials doesn't mean that you have to lower your standards. In fact, I suggest that you don't. Of course, if you are making a Halloween costume that is going to be used only once, go ahead and use the most horrible fabric that no one wants to use for anything else. But generally, I think that the upcycled garments should be made to the same standards as any other garment, otherwise it's just wasting material. This Edwardian petticoat and corset cover were both made out of old silk curtains that I found for a few euros. Admittedly, they are silk dubion rather than taffeta, but that is something that no one will see as these are underlayers. Still, dubium behaves the same way as taffeta and gives a nice lift to my skirts while also giving out that rustling silk swoosh that Edwardian women wanted to hear. This dress was made out of old IKEA curtains. I also sourced most of the lace from the local recycling center. Without using recycled materials, I'd never have afforded to use this much lace for a dress. This blouse is another curtain to an Edwardian garment project. I believe that this fabric has decorated some baby's script at some point. Fabric is not cotton, but I know it just because it doesn't wrinkle or need ironing. It, however, still looks and feels pretty much like cotton. Finding lightweight cotton muslin like this can be challenging in Finland, so I snatched this fabric up immediately. And here is a spoiler for you. This tennis outfit from 1898 that I made last year used to be a duvet cover and a pillowcase. I never published the video material as my edits were destroyed by a faulty hard drive and I gave up after losing two whole videos that I was about to post. I still plan to tackle that video as I managed to salvage the raw material with some file recover tools. The bodice needed a lining, and this cotton batist I found in my stash suited the purpose. There are several reasons why I recommend using recycled materials whenever it is possible. 
Essential materials are cheap and accessible to many. Not every customer can afford materials that cost hundreds of euros, and we want everyone to be able to take part, no matter their level of income. It also often makes sense to use cheap materials when you are a beginner and want to learn sewing techniques. I don't know about you, but I haven't kept any of the first garments I made. They had a horrible fit, and the quality of sewing wasn't that good either. Recycled materials are environmentally friendly. Many of the costumes we make aren't going to be used daily. Durability of fabrics is thus not that important. Recycled materials are varied and limit your choices. This can be both good and a bad thing. I have noticed that setting some limits to what I can do helps me to be more creative. I have also noticed that the buttons, trimmings, ruffles and other bits and pieces that I haven't even paid any attention to at the shop have sometimes become the focal point of my costumes. Just because that pillowcase came with that cute piping makes you want not to waste it. Everyone has their own goals when it comes to their hobby. As you have seen on this channel, my approach towards projects varies. Sometimes I want to get as close to the historical examples as possible. Sometimes I want to make something fun and explore historical silhouettes. Even when using store-bought fabrics, we still can't get exactly the same kind of fabrics that were available during the previous centuries. Our interpretation of the historical dress is always an interpretation. We can't help the fact that the modern way of looking things has an effect on how we select projects, combine fabrics and accessories. Besides, thriftiness used to be highly valued. Old sewing magazines I often browse have tons of ideas on how to turn old worn garments into something wearable again. You could ask yourself a question. Is following the old attitudes towards recycling another way of bringing historical features into your outfit? Finally, whatever your choices are, they are your business only. Let's all encourage each other to sew and be creative with the level of skill, resources and interests each of us has. I thought to show you some of the fabrics that I have collected in the last few months. Uh, probably some have been here for some years that are waiting for me to use them for some projects. And hopefully this will give you some kind of ideas on what to look for. First. One of the basic things I often collect are just white bed sheets. Of course, if they are in good conditions, these are really good for petticoats and bloomers and linings and interfacings, and they usually don't cost much. These are IKEA duvet covers. I have, I seem to have the same duvet cover in three different shades it's green and blue and gray and i actually like the quality a lot i have made one dress out of this and this doesn't wrinkle that much perhaps because it's made to be a duvet cover if it looks nice on the bed it looks nice as a skirt so i have still plenty of these left and I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but whatever I do with these, they will look nice. Uh, then what I've also collected are silk scarves. This is just a silk scarf. It actually has a lining and has also this nice embroidery pattern. And I've just saved this because Silk is expensive and I might want to use this for something. I have also collected some of these white silk scarves that I used for silk painting. I might do silk painting at some point, but I've also used these to make belts and accessories and sometimes even perhaps for interfacings. Yeah, this these are 45 times 140 centimeters, so these are actually quite big. Uh, this is actually a silk tulle curtain. It has this really nice pattern. It's a bit fragile since it is quite old, but I've been storing this for a while. I was thinking of making some kind of... Um, how do you call it? Um, make some kind of a wrapper scarf out of it but 
it's a bit grayish and I think I should first figure out if I can get the original color back. I think it has it's just dirty and whether I want to hand wash it is the question. I might just take it to a dry cleaners. It doesn't really matter that it's fragile as it already has some holes, but I really want to use this as fabric. Sometimes I've been really lucky and I have this whole, well, I've made it into a bowl, but there are me several meters of this wool fabric. I can't be sure that it's 100% wool, but it feels that it might be. And it's really nice green shade with some red and blue mixed in and this might be enough to make a walking skirt or even a, some kind of a jacket or coat. I also have a really similar amount of this grey wool. That would make a really nice coat for myself. So these are waiting for these big coat projects. A little bit smaller pieces of wool include this yellow one. It says that it's it costed me 8 euros. And this is enough to make a peplos skirt for my daughter. And I also got this at the same time. This is this was a little bit smaller piece of blue wool and I already used it to make her an apron. In the same time when I made the apron I also made my daughter uh, an Iron Age basically petticoat but it also works as an underdress and for that I used this linen. That's not from the flea market, I actually got it from my aunt who had stored this for ages and didn't find any use for it. So she gave it to me and it has this really nice rustic pattern but it doesn't feel scratchy at all. So works really well and there is so much of it left I might be able to do a medieval something out of it but I'm definitely going to use this then um, there is um, this this is actually a sari and I got this because it has this really nice pattern both on the edge and then when I and if I would unroll it, it has this uh, red edge at the other end. And I think this would make a really nice Regency evening gown. There seems to be another of these bed sheets. And then this. So this seemed to have been a curtain. It's been finished really badly. But it's a... Um, really nice cotton fabric that will make for instance a nice summer dress for my daughter or even me although I don't think light blue is the best color for me I think this which is the last piece I have is this is a lightweight cotton and I think this would really work as a like Edwardian shirt waist or something like that because this is really lightweight and such a timeless pattern too. So let's get back to the dress. I have now attached the skirt to the bodice and I finished the back opening edges by hand. I cut these short puffed sleeves and I sewed them onto the bodice. Now I have to make a way to gather the extra width and close the dress at the back. I have this silk ribbon that I want to use as a drawstring. I just have to make channels for it. As machine stitching would send out here, I'm making the channels by hand. For the lower drawstring, I make the channel from this cotton tape. This will also hide the ugly seam allowance underneath. I sewed the lower edge of the tape to the seam allowance with the machine. 
Now I only have to sew the upper edge to the lining to create the channel. Now it's time to add cuffs to the sleeves. Since my sleeves were short and I had fabric left, I decided to make detachable long sleeves. These sleeves are just long tubes that can be buttoned onto the sleeve cuffs. Besides fabrics, thrift stores are a treasure trove for other crafting materials. This place I often visit has several vintage sewing machines and antique spinning wheels, most of which are probably in working condition after some cleaning and maintenance. I have two whole videos on how I cleaned and restored two singers from 1888 and 19-teens. I'm definitely taking all the pottery and glass stream I can find. I go through the button selection every time to see if there are buttons that work for my costumes. This time the selection is pretty bright and plasticky, so I'm leaving these here. I buy most of my hooks and eyes here as well. Vintage ones are often bigger and sturdier than the ones you can buy from fabric stores. And then there are things that you can't find from fabric stores, such as these garter clips. These are proper metal and different from the modern plastic ones. What's this? Oh, I'm definitely keeping this. For this dress, I found this brown satin ribbon. This fits the dress very well and it hides the ugly edge of the fabric. Are you ready for the final reveal?
This video is part of Costume Symposium 2022. Do go and check out all the videos that other costumers have done. Link to the playlist is in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can also help me by donating me coffee to my coffee page that is also linked down below. And I have another video coming out this Sunday, so check it out then. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye!